Hello, welcome in this video. In this video, we're going to talk about the Pyro simulation setup. So here in Houdini, I'm just going to go into a geometry network or subnetwork. So here, geometry. And in here, I'm going to actually create my Pyro tool. It's also possible, of course, to create your Pyro simulations and tool in this network as well. Uh, but I personally prefer to always work on geometry level because there's a lot of things ac accessible here in this level. So first thing that we need for a smoke simulation or flame is sort of like a, a shape or an emitting source. So this can be anything from a box to a sphere. So we can just grab a sphere, for example. And this is then our source of emitting where we're going to spawn our smoke, for example. To actually convert this into like something usable for a simulation, we're going to use the pyro uh, source node. So this will turn it into a couple of points. So as you can see, it's this will turn it into points. Now we have different methods here of like how these points are behaving and we can actually switch to for example different methods like surface scattering or volume scattering so this might be interesting to choose different ones if we for example would go with volume scattering we can always control the particle separation here by increasing or lowering the value so you can see that we will create more points uh, to be using in the simulation what can also be interesting to do here is adding attributes so what we can do here is we can now define a certain values to be used in simulation so we can define for example the temperature value so we can for example here click the plus icon and we can then here say that we control for example the density temperature burn color fuel and so on so these are like things we can control so let's say we want to have density so we'll automatically fill in density for us and now we have like the base value of density we can do the same thing then, for example, for temperature and, for example, here as well for burn value. So now if I would now hold my middle mouse button, we will see that we will now have values or attributes being created called burn, density and temperature. So these are things that we can play around with. Once we created this, we can now also do a volume uh, rest rise. So volume rest rise attributes node. So this will turn that point cloud or these points into like an actual volume so here by default it might not really do anything and that the reason for that is we also need to assign the attributes so we're gonna here assign the burn value the density the temperature so these are now turned into volumes as you can see uh, we can again play around here with like how much details or how high quality this is so if i lower the voxel size you'll see that we will have actually more detail so uh, create more voxels so we can for example say that we want to normalize this so you can see that this will make a difference we actually have like a better shape here and with that all set up now is we can now bring in our solver so we're just going to type in pyro solver this will be like the solver node so this will actually calculate the simulation so if i plug this in over here and bring in my timeline and press play we should be able to see something so in this case it's something like this so it just goes up all the way up like so now this result itself might be a bit strange or a bit weird and the reason why sort of this is happening is because uh, we assigned here those values so you can see that we have the density temperature and burn so what we can quickly do here so let's say i want to turn down this burn value you will see that automatically here in my solver you will see that this color will turn basically either intense or will either turn down. So we can control the burn value of that. So if I would lower all of them into like a very low value uh, and then hit my re-simulation again, we can see that we will now have like a different result. So there is definitely like way less burning effect going on. So what can be cool to do is we can actually add noises in here. So we can play around with settings here in the node itself, which I will talk about in a moment. So there's a lot of different things you can do here as well. But I also want to mention is that we can actually use those attributes that we created here uh, into our advantage. So here, let's go back and I'm going to hit reset on them. So they're all back with default value one. And what we can do here is we can now create, for example, a random or a noise uh, attribute. So we can just type in noise and if we will create a noise of that so in here we will say that we want to have a attribute of the float 
and we want to specifically say density. So now we are currently overriding the density attribute. Uh, we can also here as operation do multiply. So it will take the current density value because we already created density and it will multiply the noise that we are creating here on top of that. So the current noise effect is called the simplex noise type and you can change this to other different noises to have like different results. And we can also just quickly here tweak how strong this noise should be. So if we lower this value, we will lower the density. Uh, we can also here disable this and for example, enable the ramp and we can like play around with the lack of ramping value here as well to see how much effect that will give us. And we can also play around here with like the size, we can play around with that. Uh, we can try to visualize here or noise, um, as you can see here. We are sort of like visualizing what's going on. Uh, it might be sometimes difficult to see because we're just having a bunch of points, but we can definitely see that there is some type of noising going on. So as you can see, if I would now change to different noises, we will have like different results. Uh, so let's just pick like a random noise and then see what that gives us. Uh, we can always do like a random offset here as well. And then let's try and see what, if we reset the simulation, we might see like a slight difference. So simulation still needs some tweaks, uh, but I'm going to quickly here just duplicate this node. So now instead of density, we're going to use the temperature. And we can also here then use, for example, the burn value. So these are things we can create with attributes. So let's again hit re-simulate. And as you can see, like now we have like a way different results. You can see that there is so much noising going on here. So here I quickly set all of the amplitudes to 0.1. As you can see here, just uh, because when I do this now, it will just be like a very subtle smoke. So now let's talk a bit more about the actual bio solver now itself. So here, first of all, is we have our general setup. This is actually the quality of the volume. So if we zoom in, we can see that the quality will be a bit lower. So the lower this value, say 0 0.5, 0 0.4, uh, you will see that this will now be a bit at higher quality. We will see more details. So we can actually see more interesting details going on. So of course, if you want things to happen fast, then you need to increase the value. So the higher this value, the faster it will calculate on your system. Um, also interesting to know is that we have different types of simulation. Uh, so here we are currently using this one. You can also set this, for example, to minimal OpenCL, which is actually one of the faster uh, calculating ones. So here if I press play, uh, it will do a little simulation like that. Uh, there might be difference between each simulation, but for now, I'm just going to use like the spare uh, simulation solver here. And you will see that this will also go pretty fast. Um, so now we have like a different, so now we have like that result. So I can see by switching the simulation type, there was uh, a change here in the sourcing value, which I will talk about in a moment. Um, so yeah, so further, there are some options here to increase the quality of like how many sub steps is going on, how many memory is cached on the simulation. So here it's like caching, of course, this simulation. Then we are going over to the bounds. So we are doing a simulation in bounds. Uh, so if I here would view the wireframe, you can see that this will sort of like have a bounds. Uh, this might change as you can see, it will dynamically change based on how much this is. We can force a limit, but in this case, we don't actually need limitations on the bounds for now. Uh, just going to leave that as it is. Then we're going to go to sourcing. And this is actually what's currently happening is we are limiting the sourcing. So we are only spawning this volume from frame 1 to 12. So that's why, as you can see here, after frame 12, it will stop emitting source or it will stop emitting the volume and it will disappear. So if I just disable this, and hit my simulation again. And we'll basically now have a constant emitting source, as you can see here. Uh, so that's like something that changed. You can also further hear in sourcing that we are using things like the density values, the temperature value, and the burn value. And I also use velocity. So these are things that will be used. So these are actually the values that we also created here. And these are like basic or default values uh, by the solver might look for and use. Then we're gonna go into collisions. So if you like input uh, collisions here. So this is like the second input here, if you want to input uh, collision type. Uh, then we have things for fields. So here we can get some more control. 
on how this would look look uh, we can also here have like some shape variation uh, here we can add some more interesting shape variations i would often for example disable disturbance and turbulence if i increase this somewhat and hit re-simulate you might see here that you can see that we are getting like a different version because we are disturbing uh, and and adding some turbulence here so it's not like nicely going up anymore it's like having some deformation with noises so maybe let's make this a bit more subtle again now we have something like so for example so that looks quite interesting uh, we can also like do things like adding a wind uh, you can open this and you can see that we have like a wind direction so if i increase this a lot uh, you can see that we are just basically now blowing away our or uh, smoke so if you want that you can just enable wind here you can add uh, shredding name expansion viscosity uh, but often like these are quite interesting ones to play around with depending of course on what you're looking for so what we are looking for now is just to create like a very basic smoke effect here to then be captured uh, to then be captured into a flipbook uh, we further have like to look of what we are seeing here so we have like our smoke and fire so we can for example increase this if we will increase the density of this we can play around with how much shadow and ambient occlusion is in here we can play around for example with the colors as you can see we can add some interesting colors here but by default it will do some basic values uh, we can also add some flames in here uh, if you can compute the range you can see that there are some flame effect going on uh, so yeah, so those are like all things you can play around with. Uh, but again, in our case, we're just mainly going to go for like basic smokes for our scene that we have in Titan. So we're going to leave it mainly at that. Uh, then we have some more advanced options and also some export options. Um, so that's quickly here some of the settings. Uh, we can also dive into the PyroSolver itself. Uh, we can start playing around with different nodes here as well, which is quite interesting. So once we have like now a setup that we are happy with, there are some other things that we still need to think about is, for example, we want to make this loopable. So we can actually type in make loop. And so this will help you loop. Um, in this case, what I also want to do before I plug this in is right now I have 240 frames. Um, so the actual number that I want is actually 64. This is actually just referencing to my flipbook sheet because I will have an 8x8 flipbook which returns into 64 different kinds of frames. So that's why I'm also immediately doing that over here. Um, so here we have our simulation and now it's going to be much faster to calculate the loop version because we only have like 64 frames. Uh, so this is now the loopable version of this. And you can see there's like a really good job of this. Uh, the quality is still what on the lower side if i zoom in of course you can see it's quite blocky because of the voxels but the loopable version is perfectly working now um i probably will build a switch node here so in later videos i will build a switch nodes or i will use this switch node into my digital assets so i can turn this on or off uh, because sometimes this will need some time to calculate um, so if you're just playing around with the tool, it's going to be much faster uh, disabling this. Uh, there are some options here to recommend it to be cached, actually. So that might be something that we might do or not do. Uh, so we can, for example, here, like grab a cache node and cache out uh, the volume. But since we are making like a very basic smoke, I'm not necessarily going to do that here. Uh, what I will also do is I'm going to type in um, the pyro uh, bake volume. So we're going to play that in over here and let's just pick an interesting frame. And this is actually going to sort of like override the actual final output or look. So here we can, as you can see, we can play around with the intensity. So we have like very similar options on uh, here on how the, the look was. Uh, but here we are sort of like overriding that with our own version. So I'm going to take something that's not too intense, like 2.5. Uh, we can still play around with then the colors and the shadows, so we might want to see what it could be interesting to either boost or lower. Um, and this all again depends on your preference and what you're looking for. So maybe lowering it might be interesting to 
uh, sort of like have like a nice core. So I'm going to lower it somewhat. Maybe change an ambient occlusion somewhat. Uh, we can go here to scatter and might sometimes have to recompute the range. You can see that they will add some nice, interesting color. Um, so that might be interesting to do. So we can play around with like adding some, maybe some collage in here if you want to. Maybe it's like a little bit bluish, for example. Uh, then we have like fire. Uh, so might have to compute range. And you can see we'll just add like a fire flame effect. But again, it's not really what I'm going for. I'm just going on, going for like more smoke type of things. Then we have like secondary fire and so on. So this is basically what I'm happy with. Um, and you can always go like back and forward and start to play around with things and tweak things and so on. And maybe maybe you don't like this and you want to go back and forward and so on. So, so this is what I'm currently having. So I have a setup where I can plug in any shape. So I can just, for example, now grab a color shape and I can just grab it, place it over here. I can now go back here, hit re-simulate. And now we have like a different type of simulation. And again, if you want to increase the quality, we're just going to set this to a lower value and you will immediately see that this will be at a higher quality. So we'll create much more detail. This is then quickly another example. So you can just grab whatever geometry you have or whatever shape you want it to be. So now we are like having the big head, press play, simulate and now we're just having like the big hat emitting smoke so that was it for this video so i showed you the base setup of our smoke tool there are all of settings you can still play around with and i just briefly touched on a couple interesting things that you might want to use or want to tweak so hope you enjoyed this video thank you for watching